everyone, I'm Yogi. I'm an English lecturer at President University. Welcome to Writing Series Videos at CLC YouTube channel. Alright everybody, in the very first Writing Series video, I'm going to talk about how to write an effective paragraph. Before we start, let me introduce myself to you first. Well, my name is Yogi Saputra Mahmud. You can simply call me Yogi. I'm currently an English lecturer and language coordinator at President University. So starting from today, I'd like to upload some videos about writing series videos at CLC YouTube channel. Okay, so there are several main points that we are going to talk about today. First of all, I'm going to tell about the definition of a paragraph and then what makes a good paragraph and the structure or elements of a paragraph and then last but not least, we are going to analyze a sample paragraph as well. Okay, so first of all, what is a paragraph? Well, to put it simply, a paragraph is a collection of related sentences dealing with a particular topic. I want you to pay attention to the highlighted words here, a collection of related sentences. So. Uh, the information should be organized and then it should be related or connected with one and another as well. That's why we need to understand how to write an effective and great paragraph. So in terms of the purpose, paragraphs organize the information that you want to convey to make the readers easily follow your ideas or your thought processes and the relationship of one topic and another. Well, you may have great or amazing ideas, but then if those kind of ideas are not organized well, then you will lose your mark for your assignments. That's why you need to pay attention to the, the structure and then the flow of the paragraph as well. Okay, so before you write a paragraph, it is very essential for you to understand the overall aim or the overall purpose of your writing. So you need to understand what is the purpose of your assignment, whether you need to describe a topic or you want to explain a concept or analyze findings or results perhaps, or support or refute an argument or compare and contrast information and many other purposes as well. That's why you need to consult with your lecturers or your instructors about the purpose or the aim of your assignment. Okay then, so what makes a good paragraph? Well, there are several principles that you need to understand. First of all, the paragraph must contain a topic sentence. I will talk about a topic sentence further after this. And then all other sentences after the topic sentence should support and develop that topic sentence as well. And then third, one paragraph only develops one main idea. Remember, so it contains one topic sentence and then that topic sentence only develops one main idea. So only one main idea in one paragraph. If you think you have more than one main idea, then you can separate it into separated paragraphs. And then the sentences should flow in smooth and logical manner. And last but not least, you need to include a concluding sentence as well. So this is optional, but it's still essential as well for us to understand about that. Okay, so perhaps you ask yourself like, okay, how long is a paragraph then? Well, the length may vary, but in my opinion, it is around 100 up to 200 words, everyone. So if it is too many, more than 200 words, it will be difficult for readers to follow your information or the flow of your information. At the same time, if it is too few, like less than 100 words, it will be, you know, it will look like a bit choppy, okay? Not really integrated and not really fully developed. So just try to stick with around 100 up to 200 words per paragraph. If it is too many, then you can think about another main idea and then create another paragraph. Okay, so let's talk about the elements or the structures of a paragraph. Well, there are basically three structures of a paragraph. First of all, 
it contains a topic sentence. Well, topic sentence states the main topic of a paragraph and the controlling idea. Remember, one main idea in one paragraph. And then supporting sentences, well, they develop the topic sentence. How? By giving elaboration, explanation, example, and experience as well. I will talk further about this in the third writing series videos. And then a concluding sentence, basically it signals the end of the paragraph and then retells the important points for the readers. So remember, a topic sentence, supporting sentences, and then a concluding sentence. When you want to structure a paragraph, imagine like you are having or you are structuring a burger. So first of all, you have the top bun, right? So the top bun, you know, refers to topic sentence, for example. It's essential, definitely. And you have some, you know, cheese, tomato, onions, meat, and something like that. So they represent supporting sentences. Again, you can have, you know, you can think about more than one supporting sentences, definitely. But, you know, you need to think about the number of it as well. If it is too many, then the burger will not look good. If it is too few as well, the same thing. So, you know, it should be proportional. And then you have the bottom bun. It refers to the concluding sentence. You see that the bun is similar between, you know, top bun and bottom bun. Basically, they are buns. So that's why concluding sentence, it just retells the main point that you have told, that you have written in the topic sentence. Okay, so they are similar. Okay then, so for the fourth session, let's analyze a sample paragraph. So I have a paragraph, it's less than 200 words. What I want you to do, I want you to analyze which one is the topic sentence, are there any supporting sentences or not, and then how about the concluding sentence as well. Let's have a look at this. So we have got a paragraph consisting of 126 words and it is adapted from Oshima and Hao, 1999. Okay, so let's see. So this is actually the result of the analysis of the paragraph. So if you see the blue one, so it refers to the topic sentence. So it only has one sentence for the topic sentence. Okay. Yeah. So Olympic athletes must be strong both physically and mentally. That's that. So that is the topic sentence. There is only main, uh, one main idea, right? In one paragraph. That Olympic athletes must be strong both physically and mentally. And you see the gray one. So these are the supporting sentences. We expect that these sentences should support and develop that topic sentence. And then the green one, it signals the end of the paragraph and then retell the main point of the paragraph as well. Let's analyze further. Okay, everybody. So let's talk about this topic sentence first. As you know that the very first uh, sentence here refers to the topic sentence. Remember, it doesn't have to be the very first sentence, okay? But then it talks about the main idea of the paragraph. Olympic athletes must be both physically strong, both physically and mentally. So there are basically two sub points here, physically and mentally. I actually highlight it into green and then yellow, physically, let's see. So when you look at the supporting sentences, you'll see that it develops, they develop the topic sentence, okay? For example, first of all, if you hope to compete in an Olympic sport, you must be physically strong, you see? So it actually elaborates more about, uh, you know, the necessity to be strong, both physically and mentally. 
And then you see, furthermore, aspiring Olympians must train rigorously for many years. For the most demanding sports, they train several hours a day, five or six days a week for 10 or more years. So you see, it uh, develops further about the necessity to become strong physically, okay? By giving illustration of aspiring Olympians or Olympic athletes. And then now let's have a look at the highlighted word for mentally, yellow color. In addition to being physically strong, athletes must also be mentally tough, uh, you see? So it also talks further about the needs of being mentally strong. This means that you have to be totally dedicated to your sport, often giving up normal school, family and social life. And then I highlighted another yellow color here. Being mentally strong also means that he or she must be able to withstand the intense pressure of international competition with the accompanying media coverage. Okay? So you see, it develops further about the topic sentence. Yeah, so these are the topics and uh, the supporting sentences. The gray one refers to the physical and then the green one refers to, you know, the mental. Basically, it talks more and more again about the topic sentence. There is no, you know, like unrelated sentence or something like that. So you need to make sure when you compose or write your paragraph as well. Now let's have a look at the concluding sentences or the concluding sentence here. So there is one concluding sentence and if you see uh, or, and if you compare between the concluding and the opening or the topic sentence, they are basically the same. So these activities therefore require Olympians to possess physical and mental strengths. Okay, so they are both similar. That's that. Okay then everybody. So uh, next we will have individual practice so you may actually post the video and then you can analyze uh, the paragraph by yourself and then you can share your answers or your responses in the comment section if you want so i have a paragraph here it's around 100 and yeah uh, 19 words what i want you to do you can try you know to analyze the paragraph here which one is the topic sentence and then the supporting sentences as well and then is there any concluding sentence or not remember concluding sentence is optional so it's not compulsory for every paragraph okay so you can post this video later and then you can share your responses or answers in the comment section thanks for watching if you enjoy our video please click like share and subscribe I'll see you again in the next writing series videos.